All right. So to finish this off in this last 15 minute video, I'm going to use more of that big brush painting. And s sometimes it takes me a solid, you know, hour of painting or so to kind of find the approach that makes sense for that subject matter. And then you might like wonder, especially if you're an artist that's been working for a while, even if you're just working digitally, what is your style then if, it, if you're not able to kind of find your approach? And the thing is, I don't believe you can find your artistic style and like delineate, delineate it through, you know, a, a set process of steps that you always follow. Instead, I think you find it by doing a lot of work, kind of struggling through the work, always paying attention to what you're interested in, and then looking back on a bunch of work, maybe the last 20 paintings you've done, you'll, you'll see the, um, the commonalities between them, the things that you always tend to do, you know. And those might be in your doodles as well as in your finished your finished jobs. And what's nice about that is it doesn't give you a, a set prescription for how to work. Because I'm not, very seldom doing the same things. But it gives you a confidence that whatever, as long as you're following your interests, you are kind of building skills and experience in these art forms. And you can start trusting yourself a little bit more and more each time, which allows you to take more chances. Now, the reason I feel that's important is because if you stop taking chances, you just get really bored. And as an artist, that's kind of the death toll to, to it being a, a vibrant career for you. So you have to find ways to keep yourself engaged. And ironically, being uh, happy with a job has less to do with getting paid well or being happy with it as being challenged by it and always having to solve new problems and being engaged. So as long as you don't always approach the, the art the same way, each new project can give you a, a whole whole opportunity for new challenges and new techniques for you to try. Okay, so as I finish this guy off, I want you to, to realize kind of the lessons we've learned from our spot illustrations and the projects we were doing right before this about a digital image's versatility. So what we're doing is we're kind of custom creating all these pixels, all these digital painted pixels, as I do the sensitive area of his rectum right now. It's like if you're a veterinarian surgeon, you know, sometimes you just got to be aware of where you are. I don't want to draw too much attention. I don't know what that darkness is down there, but just, just put an X there. But it's but it's needed. It's needed to to showcase the leg on top. Okay, but anyway. So think of all the versatility that these pixels you've created have, right? So even though I'm going to turn this in and I'm going to show my reference image, the life of this can change. I can put a background behind it. I can play with its colors. I can composite it in with other digital paintings. I can put line art over the top of it. I can turn it into a little button. I'm trying to think of like a clever corgi pun. I could even try live tracing it in Illustrator and make it into a color shaped vector, then doing line work over that, and making it a t-shirt design. So that's the benefit of digital. Not only does it give us immediate access to all these paint tools and approaches, it also gives us just infinitely more possibilities once we're done. Because these pixels are now our own pixels. We're not stealing them from someone else. 
So for your final project, you might incorporate digital painting as a major part of your solution, but it will probably not be the only thing you do. But digital painting basically makes it so you can do anything you can think of because you can always just create the, the colors, the pixels, the shapes yourself. All right. Let's see what's going on with the back here. Okay, so now how do we um, kind of work with the edges? Because we're just doing a a blank white background. If you want, if you want to, or already have put a background into your digital painting, that's fine. I'm not against it. But you also don't want to have a background that just won't work on different colors. You want to make it versatile. So I'm going to. Kind of treat the edge a little bit and let it be somewhat less opaque. Soften it where it needs to be soft. And then this shadow, kind of inspired by some of this reference, I do need to soften. And I'll do that through blending. Remember, it's the, the lesson of finding a level of finish that's so important, especially for your final project. Whereas this is just a, an introduction exercise, your final project is really where you get to show us your honest attempt to do your best at communicating an idea. So the way we can tell that you didn't do your best most obviously is that some parts of it look better than others, right? And so that's what kind of finding your level of finish means. And it's, it's a very practical thing. You have to know what you can deliver. And so it's kind of choosing your battles. As the shadow pulls out further away from the dog, it's going to get lighter and lighter and softer at the edges. But if I overwork the shadow too much, then it's going to distract from the dog itself. And so I'm, I'm glancing over a lot at my navigator because for this level of finish, which is so loose and kind of sergeant uh, oil painting inspired, the most important thing is that it looks good from a distance. And then if I could put in another nine hours or something on it, I could get it to look pretty good from up close and maybe actually deliver it as a finished piece to a client. But this is usually, I guess most commonly, my uh, desired finish for digital painting. Instead of then going in and do a full rendering of everything, I like to just kind of do this sketchy color approach. Keeps it energetic. And it's so much cleaner than um, trying to do it with with actual paint. And then if I were to do a commission, I would do it. I like working on uh, on rag paper, heavyweight handmade rag paper with crayon and watercolor. This would do a lot to show me kind of what what angles to use, the kind of color variety I can get away with and have fun with. And it just basically makes the process all a lot more fun. Takes the anxiety out of it somewhat. So I hope this was an enjoyable introduction to digital painting for you. I know when we see, it's very popular to have the tutorials of it online because it kind of looks like magic, you know, just watching someone build something out of nothing. But it isn't all that difficult.
And just like anything else, we get a lot better at it with practice. At the end of the spring semester, I just took a commission to do three digital portraits of um, kind of Irish historical heroes and artistic heroes and just did them all digitally. And it was a little much all at once, but I think it just forced me to get a lot more comfortable. And each one I would use a different kind of paint texture, have different art, art historical inspirations. And yet they all look like they're from me. So. I'm gonna miss little hot dogs. Okay, so now, as you're finishing, how do we organize this? Well, we don't wanna get rid of all your, your layers. This is a working file. There's no reason to get rid of them. You might come back to them. But we're gonna turn them off where we don't need them. All right. So we keep what's helpful. Then we'll do a little review of, of the layers that make up our painting and turn off all my color reference. I have that one composited John Singer Sargent element in there, which is set onto soft light. So all it really does is kind of deepen certain colors. But I do want to make sure I erase the parts I'm not using. Otherwise, they can show up when I flatten or merge the image. All right. Let's see. So I want it on white, so I'm going to turn on my white background. That shows me. Let's see. I need maybe a little bit more. It's, it's no surprise that the place I have the least defined painting is the place where this hand is. And I don't know what's there. But now I can kind of endeavor to, to show that joint, to show the uh, little bit more texture in that leg coming forward. Maybe a little bit more shadow underneath it. And honestly, if I had the time, it would be good to just set this aside and then look at it tomorrow and make some final adjustments to it. But as it is, we're going to turn it in. So, actually, I even like this composition, but you can obviously crop yours to fit whatever kind of composition you like. And then you say, file, save, save it as your PSD. So what layers am I actually using? Well, I have a base layer that's just solid gray. And that was a silhouette of my opaque paint layer, which was this, to kind of fill in all those whites. Then I have blending on top of that, which alone looks like just this. And there's just so many different options I could do. And then I've got the, the kind of final big brush John Singer Sargent kind of paint, which alone looks like this. Doesn't look much, look like much on its own, but it's all very considered. So those are the blended layers. And that's what goes on top of my just rough first 15 minutes of painting, right? What I am going to do is take this gray layer, unlock it, because it's giving a really sharp edge, and I'm going to soften it a little bit. Go to Blur, Gaussian Blur, and just blur it out. Not a ton, but a little bit. So it's a little bit softer. And that helps. And if I think I need to, and I think I do on this side where there's a lot of highlight, I'm just going to erase away from that edge a little bit. I could use a textured brush if I wanted. 